Oh, good morning guys. I'm just out here putting a little spray foam in between where I got some cracks and gaps on the insulation. So I don't want any air booming in the raptor cavities because that'll diminish the value of the insulation going on top of it. I would have liked to have just spray foam this place, but unfortunately the cost of spray foam is just ballistic. And I had a dozen of these cans here and a few uh, other cans of some other stuff. So I figured I'd use this up. Just a little trash before I start putting fiberglass up. Two things I've learned over the years. One is keep me away from uh, these uh, foam cans and the next is keep me away from caulk guns. So after spraying all the uh, cracks and stuff with spray foam, I'm now gonna start putting in some fiberglass. Somebody had just left a comment about rock wool, but this is what my budget allows for, so. Already feeling warmer. Now look at that, Carl off the grid. Yes, sir. Old man. Here, let me shut off the camera. Well, I think that when you get your little furnace, it's probably about a, a 35,000 BTU would be good enough for here. Somebody told me 22. Who said that? I think your son. Well, Keep that means let it run a little longer, but I think you're gonna come in here initially when it's cold out, right? If you allow it to crank it up, it takes yeah, a while. Yeah, true. Uh, I looked at online too for direct vent, you're right there about a thousand bucks, but uh, uh, the 2200 will do up to 500 square foot, but I got the cubic feet that we got to worry about. You got this. Yeah, because this is only 300 square feet. But area-wise? Area-wise, it's huge. Yeah, it's a lot. So that's why it doesn't... Who cares? You're not... You're, you're, I don't think but a 20... If you went over to Mark's, bought one between a 30 or 35,000, it might be 50 bucks difference. 
Forty yeah. on. Yeah. I, I wasn't really concerned about that yeah. as much as. So you might as well. Uh, you gotta have enough heat to be able to. Muddy it. So Bruce came over to give me a hand with the stove and brought his grinder to make quick work of the rust and strip screws. In the previous clip, we were discussing a gravity-fed direct vent wall furnace, which requires no power to run. The size of the units depend on many factors, but as Bruce said, it would be nice to turn it on and heat the place quickly versus a slow rise in temp. It'd be nice to depend on the stove for all my heat, but as I get older, I no longer care to get up three or four times a night to fill it. So, by putting a propane wall furnace in, it makes the place a bit more comfortable to live in. Okay guys, with this chimney now pretty much off, the stack from behind the stove, you can see why I wanted to get at it. I'm hoping you can see it in there. Totally plugged. And I'm betting that is the reasoning behind this being an ornament versus uh, an actual functioning old wood stove. This is not a sealed unit, this is a hundred year old stove, so uh, as I was saying in the last video, it's not the most efficient. It'll probably only burn for a couple hours before adding more wood. And I want the wood stove simply for the fact that uh, it's a heck of a good backup system. I will have gravity fed propane uh, furnace because until I can afford a decent stove that'll burn 8 to 12 hours. That's a lot of trips up and down the ladder at night to add wood to the fire. Get rid of Yeah, we need to get rid of that one. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to clean this flange up too. We're going to get rid of this bolt. We're going to put a new one in here. That's the one holding that latch for here. So we can't really get rid of that one. No, but we can probably replace it. Yeah, there ain't much metal left there. Whoop, and screw you up. <coughs> yeah, there ain't much metal left there. Oh. So I don't know if we want to mess with that one too well, much. Well, let's or... cut that one off. Yeah. What was this one for? Uh, here. Okay, we'll put a new one in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we can get at it through the chimney stack. Try not to drag that stuff. Okay, should we try to get a bolt in that one right away? Which one? Right <coughs> away? Oh, that dust is still getting to me. Nasty stuff. Trying to get these two in. Because we don't want to tighten up until it's all ready. Right. Right. Did you put your hand in the groove? If it's clock, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, it seems like good too. We got it everywhere. Well, I was always uh, banned from cult guns and furnace uh, cement. Furnace mm -hmm. cement. This shit ain't coming off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously, we're not uh, stove builders. So, ah, now I found it. I left you some. Okay, well, that was nice of you. Oh, yeah. Now we gotta find. Bigger bolts for these two, or are you use the same bolt? Yeah, we should be able to use the same same setup. Yeah, with these things on there. So these are the four up right here. <coughs> okay, the Phillips is sitting somewhere. That's a straight blade. Mm. Didn't take. <coughs> didn't take long. Who's that? How about my is pocket? It, on, uh, it was in my pocket. Oh, it was in your pocket. Okay, we'll go to your 
It's a good, good video for all timers. Uh -huh. Well, this is pretty much back together, other than them, right? Right. We I wonder just if we put our put it back on the stand. Yeah, put it back on the stand and. You see, I've been trying to fluff up the uh, insulation a little bit because it's not meant to be packed in. It's definitely getting warm up here now. As you've seen, I had to pull off my my uh, long sleeve shirt, and whew, I'm gonna be in shorts pretty soon. Just with that garbage can heater down there set on low. So this shouldn't take much to heat, at least up here. But uh, I'll get back to you when I get some more done. All I want in this whole life A little red house in a country wife A picnic table out on the lawn A couple of kids and a couple of dogs Work all day to half past five Every day of the week, a big soft chair. But when I'm old, tack a box and a fish pole. I don't care about a forge and a fame. I just don't want to know my mailman's name. At Christmas time, I'm gonna leave him a gingerbread cookie. It don't sound like much, but it sure is heaven to me. Notice how I tear the insulation and tuck it behind the wire and then some in front. It's the same thing with the boxes. Try to get it nice and tucked in the back and just cut a little bit out for the box. Well, good morning everyone. We're uh, back down here at the cabin once again. Just heating the place up with the old garbage can heater currently. Uh, hopefully with luck today I'll maybe get some uh, cement board on that back wall and underneath this uh, wood stove and see if I can get that fired up. 
But the last couple days I've been working on getting some insulation in. I'm gonna put my backer boards in here for the ceiling and then for the corners on the walls yet. Got all the ceiling pretty much insulated. I got the back wall pretty much insulated. It's currently a balmy seven degrees here in tropical Minnesota. Probably gonna drop a couple more as the morning sets in. While the place is warming up, I will start getting busy with the hanging these backer boards so I can get the rest of that ceiling in. Okay guys, this is the stuff I'm using on the uh, back wall and then underneath the uh, stove. This is just a uh, tile backer or a cement board. I decided I'd go a cement board on the back wall just for the, the fireproofing or fire resistant ability of it. And then what we're going to do is probably do a stucco top coat on that. A real heavy knockdown or something just to get the desired effect that I want. And then uh, it's gonna also go underneath the stove just to prevent any sparks from landing on the bare wood. So I will pre-mark this and wait until my brother-in-law gets out here and then uh, start hanging this stuff. Hey guys, this stuff is pretty easy to work with. I mean, quite flimsy. Should have two guys. Cuts similar to uh, drywall. But obviously there's uh, beads and mesh and concrete, so it's not going to be as clean as drywall. I'm just using a utility knife to cut everything and seems to work fine. Uh, Next one here I'll do is a four footer to break my seams and then I'll run another one across and leave that end open or use a four footer just to keep uh, heat away from that section. So yeah, I'll get back to you when I get another sheet in here and start cutting. Well, the little unicorn came back. He ain't afraid of, yeah, he ain't afraid of anything.
may want to hang around here today. Still half a day hunting left. So 46 inches is what we need. So I'd like to thank Jerome and Joe for showing up and helping me get this stove connected with the chimney pipe and then putting it all back together. Thank you guys.